So, um, in very basic terms, Joe, what what is a swarm? A swarm is a natural method of propagation for a hive. When a hive becomes too crowded, too many bees, or has what we call honey bound, mm -hmm. uh, the bees, and it is not the queen that makes this determination, it is the two to three week old bees in the hive that make the determination. We're too crowded, it's time to swarm. We need to build a queen, we need to start prepping for moving. And they will start building queens. When a queen becomes, when a queen hatches, then the bees will say it's time, and the oldest queen will leave with about half the bees in the hive. And what does a hive look like if you were to come upon one as a non beekeeper? Out here in uh, the Bosque, a hive is just nothing but beeswax. It can be light and dark. It'll typically be six to eight feet above the ground, out of a path, out of the walking distance. Uh, if it is, you know, we all know what the beehives look like, the boxes, the Langstroth boxes, or in the case of top bars, you know, those are out there. But in most cases, they will be out, uh, they can be in hollows of trees, they can be uh, in uh, garbage cans, <laughs> they can be anywhere, any place they find a suitable, uh, approximately one and a half square feet of space. So. And if, if you found one a, as a non-beekeeper, what, what should you do? Well, leave it alone, first off. <laughs> Secondly, uh, call a beekeeper. Find a, tell somebody, hey, I know that where there's a, a, a wild hive or a swarm, or uh, let me uh, just uh, go online, look for swarm catchers, or you know, Google beekeepers, or whatever it might be, but uh, look for uh, a beekeeper to come see if they can take care of it. By paying attention to your hive, you know when things are starting to reach a critical mass, when the, when the bees are becoming too crowded, when there is too much honey. That way you can add frames, you can move frames, you can put in uh, empty frames, you can do, you can add boxes, you can do a lot of things to inhibit that swarming tendency. But if you're not on top of your hive, if you're out there and you say, oh well geez, it's been only 10 days, I didn't do it last week, I'll, it'll take me another two or three days to get out there and the bees have already made up their mind to swarm. There's not one thing you can do to stop them. So, but oh. just pay attention to your hive. Okay. Look for queen cups. Okay. Now, almost all hives will have some form of queen cups as emergencies. They will build the queen cups uh, for uh, just to have them. They like to build those. But start looking for uh, queen cups that are, are advancing. Look in your queen cups. See if there is any royal jelly in it. Okay, royal jelly is a substance that the bees produce in their heads. If there's royal jelly in there, you know there's a, a queen uh, being built. So you want to look for uh, different signs. Okay, uh, is your hive too crowded? Is there enough space? Those kinds of things there. But look for those queen cells. If you see uh, the swarm cells or even supersedure cells, uh, and be sure and check them out, hold them up to the light, see if you can see that, that royal jelly in there. Uh, that's one of the real quick signs to, to know that they're going to go. Okay. Um, again, as someone who's pretty inexperienced, what would too crowded look like to you? One thing that, that we get a lot of calls about is bearding. Okay, you see beer, bees on the front of the hive, on the sides of the hives, you see them out there and at the afternoon or in the early evening and, the, and you say, geez, is my hive too crowded? Not necessarily. When they're bearding, they are, they're really probably just shuffling air into the hive. They're moving a lot of air. Uh, but that is one sign that your hive may be getting too crowded. So you want to look, if they're starting to spread around the hive instead of just on the first you know, the six inches above the entryway, if they're starting to spread around the sides there, then you should figure your hive is getting too crowded. Supersedures, this is when the queen may be starting to fail. Uh, she may be uh, two years old. Uh, 
she may be older, she may just have not uh, had effective mating. They appear in the middle of the, of the frame and they look, they will hang down like my little finger out of the, uh, out of the, the comb. And that's, a, you look at it and you go, wait a minute, what's going on there? And that is, you know, uh, it, you know it's different. It looks like a peanut out there. So uh, that's, uh, that's what you're looking for. Uh, if you see those, and they will build, like I said, bees love redundancy. So they will build 10 or 12 of them. And they want, to, you know, they want that queen to be viable, to hatch out, and they want to see you know, what she's, uh, okay, let's go, let's see. Swarm cells, on the other hand, are typically at the bottom of the frame. So that they are, they will still be as big, they'll be like a peanut, but those are at the bottom of the, of the frames. If you're, they're in your top bar, they're at the bottom of your trapezoid. Okay. When I get a swarm call, I want some pretty basic information. What's your name? What's your phone number? What's your address? Where are the bees? When did they get there? How high are they? Do I have to get my 12 foot ladder out? Uh, if you look at it like it was a ball, what kind of ball is it? Now, and people look at this and they go, oh, it's not a ball, it's a, it's a trapezoid, or it's a, it's a, it looks like a football. Uh, you ask them if it's a ball. Uh, think about it if it's, it's a softball, a football, a basketball. Uh, I had a lady call once and say, oh, it's like a beach ball. And I said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. So <laughs> you want to associate it with something you know, okay? And a ball is, is easy to do. So you want some basic information. Uh, if it's uh, inside, uh, you know, have they moved into a wall? Have they moved into a tree? Are they in a box? Where, where are they? You want to know so you can take the appropriate equipment. Now, um, what might a beekeeper do to avoid uh, swarming um, in a hive that was too crowded and you were seeing this other evidence that they were getting ready to beat it out of there? <laughs> they're, they're really, you can do a split. You can take uh, frames of bees. Take you, know, you, you, what you're doing essentially is creating a, uh, a false swarm, okay? You're in control of it. Uh, you want to be able to, uh, if you're a, a Langstroth beekeeper, for example, take out six frames of brood, put them in another, uh, in another box. Take out the old queen and put the, her with uh, in another box. Ideally, you'd like to move it a, a distance away, but if you can't, if you, have, if you have no place else to move it, you want to move it into your yard and shift the location of the entryway at least 90 degrees. So if you have, if your hives all face east and you want to create this split, take your frames out, put them in another box, find your old queen, turn your box 90 degrees, face it south or face it north. And move it so it, it gives those bees there a whole different outlook. They say, oh geez, Something's different, and we have to figure it out. If that old queen is in there with those six frames of, of bees and brood, and, and uh, she's likely to stay, the bees are likely to stay, and the bees that are left behind are likely to create a new queen, and uh, that's one way to, to do it. But that's really, it's, it's a false swarm. You're in control of it. 